plankton to drill bed. That's why we need a little bit extra just to make sure. Anywhere from 25 to 50 is my recommendation. 25. Is that because it's just enough to break through, but not too much? You could add an extra inch if you want to, but now what are you drilling here? Air. You're drilling nothing. You're just wasting time again. So you just want enough to make sure it goes through. So the last thing you want to do is have to run that tool again. Right? So we're going to take the thickness of the material. We're going to add the drill point. So 0.1875 plus 0 0.075. That gives you 2625. And then we need to add a little bit extra, a number in between these two, 25 to 50. So what would make 2625 a nice round number? Two six fifty. Oh, I'm going to round it up to three hundred. That's an extra thirty seven thousand. That's perfectly in that twenty five to fifty. So do you still have to add the 75,000 when you're doing a drill bore? Drill bore, yeah. Okay. The only time you do not add the point of the drill is if the blueprint specifically calls out one inch to the point. Okay. It's not often you see that. Typically, they would only do that is, let's say you're drilling a hole here, and you don't want to affect this here. So you want to control how deep the guy is drilling. So you want to specify, hey, don't go any more than 20 thousandths to the point, otherwise you're going to break through that wall, or you're going to create a weak point. So it'd be 75 thousandths plus the material plus the extra? Plus a little bit extra. Like I said, you've got the material thickness. What's this, what does it really measure? It varies from part to part. That piece of paper varies from paper to paper. That angle, did someone grind it? Or did someone actually go over to the pestle grinder and pitch it up? And that's the angle. So any questions about fly cutter, spot drill, or the drill? those numbers came from. It's a lot to do. Programming is not easy. A lot of things that you have to think about. It's not just a matter of putting a part in the machine and hitting cycle start and it's going to come out great. A lot of things you need to factor. So Mr. T was wrong. We're not just... You've only just realized this. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been at the school. <laughs> We're not just button pushers. Well, that's what precision means. <laughs> he says it's if we can hold anything to within a thou on the conventional, he's like, you're a precision machinist. That's not the definition of precision. We just covered it last week. And I know. But that's house of accuracy. House of accuracy. It's in the book. <laughs> so let's load up Notepad. Let's go over the program. I love these programs. So we're going to have a percentage sign. All class number. Student number and 
project number. So today I'm just going to be student one and project ten. Remember, you can only have five numbers in here. Right? What is this program for? Keychain project. tools do we need? Until one is a fly cutter. Now remember, because the keychain is smaller, that means we're going to use the smaller fly cutter. Two half inch spot drill. Two three. It's a quarter inch diameter drill bit. Two four. Range two flute and milk. So, I'm going to write a note here. G54X is not in the center of the workpiece. The distance from here to this side is 2.2. Distance from here to that side is 1.75. So it's not in the middle by how much? Uh, Twenty-five thousand. Five hundred thousand. Wait, one seventy. Yeah, exactly. But it's how much is it offset from the middle? Oh. Just go this square here <laughs> minus 250 from that number. That will give you two inches. 800,000. This number here, you would add 250. So from here to here is two inches. Here to here is two inches. So what's the difference between those two? 250,000. 250,000. So how are you going to set your offset? You're going to put your edge finder in there. You're going to touch your part. Where are you going to touch the part? You're going to touch on the left? No. So you're going to touch here? And then what are you going to do? Touch your X. Add 100. And now your edge finder is here. And you're going to add one inch 750. Okay, now so you think that your offset is going to be here, right? 
then you have the think two, about this. You have the two fifty, right? Your part is not four inches. So where you're touching on is actually here. What is the distance here? Hundred thousands. You don't know. Oh, you don't know. So what you need to do is touch on the part, move over the hundred thousands, like you said, but we're going to find the middle. Divide by two. Find the middle of the part, which will get you to here, and then minus how much? Minus 250. Right. So we're going to find the center of the part. Find the center on the x axis and then minus 250. You can't go over 1 inch 750. Otherwise, it won't machine that left side of the saw cut finish. G54 on the y axis, where's that one? That one is on the center. Where we're going to touch all our tools the top of the pot. What do we write next? Your safety line. Safety line. Send the machine home. And then we're going to grab tool number one, PYM6. What tool should be in the spindle? Tool right. number one. Oh, and the spindle. Yeah. So if we grab the spot drill right now, stop the program. Something's not right. So what are we going to do with the fly cut? Move to position one that we wrote down earlier, bring it down on the Z, and then move to position two. Remember, do all the math before you start writing the program. So we're going to move to the first position G90, G54, G0, X4.25, Y0. That's our spindle speed. Where does 716 come from? From a calculator. 716 comes from 600 times 3.82 divided by 3.2 inches. Our fly cutter is not 3.2 inches. What is it? It's 1.7. 1.7. That's going to change the RPMs. 600 times 3.82 divided by 1.7 gives you 1,348. Yep. So the diameter of the fly cut it changes, so it does the RPM.
how do we tell the machine how long the two is? Uh, 43. Uh, G43. Where you store the offset number, so offset number one. And we're going to go one inch of the workpiece. Use that distance to go to check that we get the offset here. Right? Then we're going to go 100 thousandths. And on the coolant, mm -hmm. and then we're going to take our tool down. What Z value we're going to go to? We're going to put negative 5. Keep that number in your mind for a while. Right? Once we get to 2, 5, I'm going to talk about it. We're actually going to put C0. So right now, the tool is at position 1. We brought it down on the Z. We're ready to take our cut. Now we need to G1 to position 2. So G1 is modal. It's already activated. All we need to put is X negative 3.75. That takes us to fly cut at position 2. That's it. We're done. Fly cut the piece. What are we going to do with the Z? Lift it up. What are we going to do with the coolant? Turn it off. Send the machine home. Turn up the spindle. And then M00, zero zero. check the surface finish. It hasn't cleaned up, what do we need to do? And five, five thousand. We will take another cut. Once we've checked the surface finish, we're ready to continue. So now we need to grab tool number two. If I go off too far, just let me know. I will be giving this as a handout, so if you fall behind, don't worry. <sighs> so we're gonna change the tool two. What are we going to do with tool two? Going to spot drill a hole where? What did we write down earlier? X2, Y0. So we're going to put G90, G54, G00, X2, Y0. Spindle speed, 1528, M3. 
Now we need to tell the machine how long the tool is. F43, or G43, I mean. G43, height offset number two. Take the tool to one inch above the workpiece. We're going to turn the coolant on and notice how I didn't put Z.1 this time. I just put the coolant. Is it modal? Because when we do the G82 cycle, the machine is going to take the R and it's going to wrap it from one inch yeah. to a hundred thousandths above the pot. So I don't need to move it a hundred thousandths, it's going to do it itself. Okay. If I did move it to a hundred thousandths, if I use G99, the machine will go back to a hundred thousandths. If I use G98, the machine will go back to a hundred thousandths. How many options do I have now? I don't have any options. They're both going to do the same thing. Right? So if I leave that at one inch and I program G98, now it'll go back one inch above the path. So if I had to think about a clamp, I've got some options now. Right? So that's why you put them both. So that's why we have an initial Z. And then the R gives us some options. So the p-value, 79,000. Our F is 9.168. So how many more holes are we going to drill? None. So we can just cancel the can cycle now. Boss comes up to you in the future and tells you that you need to drill more holes. All you've got to do is just put an X coordinate or a Y coordinate, and you're done. You're ready to start machining again. That's the advantage of using the can cycles. So even though we're only doing one hole, it's still programmed for it. Because in the future, they might change the program. So all you've got to do is put the new positions in there, and that's it. The machine will keep drilling until you tell it to stop on G8. Right? So once we send the machine home, tech chamfer. Check the chamfer, make sure it did it right. <clears throat> now we're going to grab tool number three. What are we going to do with tool number three? much the same thing that we did for the spot drill. We're going to go to the same position, just the spindle speed is going to be different. You're going to bring the Z down, except it's going to be H3 now, and then instead of a 82, we're going to use G81. Right? 
So, oh, that is that the handout? Because like this is what we wrote, and then you're going to give us the handout with that different information, or are we just going to go back and change it? Change. Just change it. Okay. Six. So two three, move to the same position except the spindle speed change to 3056. Bring the Z down, except this time we're using offset number three. And then we're going to use a G81 cycle for Z negative 300 to make sure the drill bit goes all the way through. R value of 100,000, that's where it's going to be from, and then go back to with the G99, and then the feed rate, 9.168. Except now we're not checking the chamfer. We're checking that the drill went through. Any questions so far? So we fly cut it, we spot drilled it, we drilled it. Now we're ready to mill the corners and machine it to size. So we're going to grab tool number four. So we're going to move the end mill to this position and then bring it down to position two, three, four, five, six. Lift it up, wrap it over, feed back down on seven, and then move it to eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then we're finished with the two. Oh, it's going to be G90, G54, G00, to X 1.875, Y 1 inch, Z down, G43, height offset number four, one inch above the part. Question, uh, for the tool three, could you use the high offset three or would it be the same? High offset three. H and the T should always match. So if you're using tool one, H one. Tool 10, H two. So because I'm not using a can cycle, we're going to put Z.1 and A to turn the coolant on. And then we're going to feed the tool down. 200 thousandths. So 
remember, the material is 1 at 7 pies. When we touch the end mill on, we touch it on the top like that. So we need to go a little bit extra than the material just to make sure it all cleaned up. Because that thickness of the paper might be around 5 thou, and your material might be slightly bigger than 1875. So by going 200 thousandths, it should all clean up. 200 thousandths. So G1 is activated. We're going to G1 from position 1 to position 2. So the only thing that changes is the y-axis. Is it a negative or positive value? Still positive. Still positive value. When we go from position two to position three, now we've got an arc. We've got a program of G2. And that moves us to X 2.25, Y 3.75. And do we have an I or J? J, negative, 375. When we go from 3 to 4, it's a straight line, so we've got to switch back to G1. G1. Y, negative, 375. Have another arc again. G2, x 1.875, y negative 750. This time we have an i value. Now we need to bring the tool off the part, position six. It's going to be a straight line move. Y negative one inch. <coughs> now we need to lift the tool up. Going to be rapid move, G0, zero, zero. Z, hundred thousandths. And we're going to move to position seven. So X negative one point three seven five. Then feed the tool back down again.
move to position eight. Y negative seven fifty. Nine to ten is a straight line, so G one. Exos to position eleven. Now we're going to take the tool off the workpiece, so G one to Y one inch. Tool off the workpiece and fill it off. Send the machine home and spindle off. F zero. Make sure it measures two inches. That's what the blueprint is called. Okay, <clears throat> any questions so far? Understand what we're doing? Okay. Keychain project. You're allowed to talk. Keychain project. <laughs> we just wrote the code for the keychain project. So our final two, two five. We were still ready for it. If you've done a design already, you can copy and paste that design into this program. If you haven't done anything, I recommend you do the G47 cycle, otherwise you're not going to get this project finished. Okay. So you're going to move to wherever you want to start your engraving. You may need to play around with the numbers so it all fits. So this XY will change depending on what you're going to engrave if you're using the G47. Just play around with those numbers on the simulator. We'll show you how to do that when we go out there. We're going to call up tool length compensation. G43, H5, Z1 inch. Turn the coolant on, because we're going to use the can cycle. Which can cycle are we going to use? 
Is it a... What do you want to... Oh. Text engraver, G47. P0, so the machine reads parentheses, whatever I put in there. So put in whatever you want to engrave. Can I also put John? Of course you can. <laughs> You can put John is great or anything you want. <laughs> I don't mess with the numbers. Sir John. Okay. So what do we need for this cycle to work? X, Y, Z, R, K, I, R. We've got an X, Y already. That's where it's going to move to. So all we need to do is put a Z. Five thousandths. If you want to go deeper, just keep going deeper once you've taken the cut. If you go too deep at the beginning, what are you going to have to do, Javier? Oh, you're going to have to fly cut it off and start all over again. Oh, so take another 5,000 off. And... My name is Jobber, that's what it said. Did you, did you redo it? Yeah, I had it. Good question. We want to like overlay, like put a little on top and a little on bottom. So you're gonna to have to do two G forty sevens. Oh, you mean like uh, two lines? Yeah. So there'll be. So we need a Z. We need an R value. We need an I. Do you want to do this at an angle? You can tell the machine how tall each letter is going to be. I'm just going to put J one inch for now. I can change it at the simulator. What else do we need? We need an E, which is the plunge feed. E is always half of F. I'm just going to delete my name here, just so it all fits on one line of code. P9, that's a sergeant major. So I just deleted my parentheses so it all fits together on one line so you can see it. Obviously, if you don't put anything in parentheses, it's not going to engrave anything. So once the machine does the G47 cycle, it's going to go back to the R plane. It's going to lift up a hundred thousandths. So if you wanted to do two lines, you would just put another G47 right there. Uh, under, on the next line down. But now you would have to put a different XY. So you'd have to put XY on the G47 cycle. You want it to be in a different position. <coughs> oh yeah, because right. you're gonna so you're gonna go X Y. Just change the X Y. Right. So you just keep playing with that and simulate it until you get it how you want. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm done. So I'm gonna send the machine home. My X would be the same. My Y would be different. And technically, we are finished. I'm just going to go back to tool number one. Right? So scroll up in your program. And I told you to keep the number in your mind. 
Think about this for a second. When we touch all the tools on, on the top of the part, we call that Z0. If we go down 10 thousandths with the fly cutter, now the part is here. So on tool 5, when we do the text engraving, how deep did we go with the G47? Five thousandths. So what are you engraving? Nothing. You're engraving nothing. Right? You've got to mess around with all your offsets if the fly cutter doesn't clean it up. Right? So there's an easy way to do this. So that is why I put Z0. On the G54, use the edge finder to set our X and our Y. But what else is on that line? A Z. This is what's called a global offset. Global offset. Nice. So anything you put on the Z affects this line here, the Z0. So if I put in there negative five thousandths, all the tools go down an extra five thousandths. So even though I programmed Z0, how much is the machine going to take off? Five thousandths. How much would it take off for the ball end up? Five. Five from the program and five from the offset, so it's going to go down 10. It'll engrave something for you, right? So the G54Z affects all the tools. So you don't have to mess around in your program getting all the Z values right. You can control them all from here. So if the fly cutter doesn't clean up, you just add another five to the G54Z. So now it says negative 10. How much is your ball end mill going to go down? 15, another 5 on top of the 10. Right? So it doesn't matter how many times you take those passes with the fly cutter, you never have to touch tool 5. Right? So that's going to save us a lot of work at the machine. Just make sure it says five thousands and not fifty. Oh. It's a big difference between the two numbers. So make sure you type in the correct number. Okay? So now we're going to start setting the Z on the G54 as well. And that controls how far all the tools go extra. Alright? Does that make sense? 0 0.005, not, not 0 0.05. Yeah, not 0 0.05. So have a look at your blueprint. Have a look at the page that looks like this. And this is tool number four. What we just programmed for tool number four. When I tell the machine to go to X one inch, sorry, X one inch, eight seven five, Y one inch, where does the tool move? X one point eight seven five, Y one point zero. Where's the tool going to move to? To to the edge? 
one point x one point. Oh, position one. Top right edge. What part of the angle is that? The center. The center. On the next line of code, we told the machine to go to Y750. What part of the end mill goes there? The center of the end mill. What programming to the center of the spindle? The bigger the end mill, the more material it's going to cut here. So what's going to happen to my part as I move around here? You're going to be removing material. It's going to make my part undersized. Right? Everyone agree? This is what your part is going to come out like. Because we're not accounting for the radius of the end mill. We're going in 125 too much, right? Because we program to the center of the spin. So how would we have to fix that? You have to, what did we do on the clamps? We put in that value to... Now when we machine the clamps, we had to move the radius off the path. So that means we're going to have to change our whole program. But there's an easier way. This is where G41 and G42 come in. So what does G41 do? It's a left compensation. Tool compensation left. G42? Right compensation. So if you have a straight line, and you don't use compensation, the center of the tool will be on that line. That's G40. You can move it left, or you can move it right. So which one's which? G42 is to the right, and G41 this is... This one is G42? Yes, and then the other one is G41. Everyone agree? Yay, nay. <laughs> now think about this. It's very important you think about this. Take a look at that wall in front of you. Right? If I'm the tool and I'm moving towards that wall, left moves the tool this way. Right? So now I'm compensated left this way. But if I move the tool in the opposite direction, left goes this way now. Hmm. What's my point? It depends on what direction. It depends on what direction you're moving the tool. So if you're here, and you're moving the tool this way, it's going to reverse it. Left is here. That is right. But if you're here, and you're moving that direction, then yes, you would have been correct. It is critical that you understand which way you're moving the tool. Because if you don't, and you move the tool the wrong direction, you get a pocket that looks like that. Instead of looking like that one. All because they move the tool the wrong direction. Got to understand which way you're moving the tools. Could a compensation is used to offset the center of the tool. It shifts it the distance of the radius. 
to the specified side of the program path. So the program G41 is going to move left. G42 is going to move right. Complex par geometries have an angled lines or lines tangent to arcs and lines intersecting arcs involve substantial trigonometric computations. Cutter compensation involves programming the par geometry directly. Highlight that sentence. Cutter compensation involves programming the par geometry directly. So whatever you see on the blueprint is what you program, which is what we just did earlier. We moved it to position two on the path, position three on the path. You program the geometry directly from the blueprint, and you let the machine figure out where it needs to move. So we got G40, could a compensation cancel? I like the first sentence. G40 will cancel the G41 or the G42 per compensation commands. The tool used in cutter compensation will change from a compensated position to an uncompensated position. So when you program G40, the tool moves from compensated to uncompensated. G41, I like the first sentence. G41 will select the compensation left. Remember, it depends what direction you're moving the tool. Left can move it away from the path, or it can move it into the path, depending on which way you move it. A little bit further down, it says A, D, N, N must also be programmed. Highlight that. A D and N. D and N just means a D number. Okay. Talk a little bit more about it in a second. G42. I like the first sentence. G42 will select cut a compensation right. And highlight the same part we just did. A D and N must also be programmed. A D number must also be programmed. So whenever you program G41 or G42, you also need to program a D value, a D number. So D and N, cut a compensation value, the D number. The actual offset amount must be input in the specified tool offset display number. D and N. The actual offset amount must be input in a specified tool offset display. So how do we tell the machine how long it took us? G43. And, uh, what? and the 